This month, around 260 something years ago, an incident occurred in world history that changed the course of global history. And it is very likely that that incident was caused by the dua of one Muslim lady that was returning from Hajj. So let us discuss that story and in the process, learn some world history that is inshallah of relevance uh, even today. I'm talking about the Portuguese empire. Much can be said. When we think of colonization, when we think of Western lands invading Muslim lands, we think of England and France as being the most, uh, if you like, evil empires. But the fact of the matter is that before them, the Portuguese empire preceded them. And they were the worst out of all of the colonizers. And yet we don't hear much about them. Today you'll find out why. Why don't we hear much about the Portuguese empire? If you remember a little bit of your global history, it was in fact the Portuguese who first discovered the route to the Muslim lands and to the Far East. Remember Vasco de Gama, right? He was the one who first learned how to cross from Europe. You know, they were searching all that time. Columbus got lost, ended up here. It was Vasco de Gama who, from Portugal who eventually made his way across uh, South Africa and made his way back to India. And on the way, he met many Muslims as well in Mozambique and Mombasa and other places in Oman. And so he's meeting the Muslim world. He meets the, the Indian land and then the trade begins. Long story, I'm not going to go into all of that, but one thing you should know is that the Portuguese started Western colonization and they're the ones who set up the infrastructure for the other countries to follow. And the evils that they did, really all the other countries pale in comparison to what they have done. The Portuguese, of course, they colonized so many parts of Africa, uh, including the Muslim lands and sultanates in Mozambique. In Asia, of course, they, uh, they, they colonized parts of uh, Oman, parts of Yemen. Uh, in India, of course, Goa, as you're aware, the Indians are aware, Goa is, of course, uh, you know, still there's a Portuguese influence in Goa. In South America, Brazil, as you're aware, one of the things the Portuguese did, actually, they're the ones who set up African slave trading. All African slave trading, which we think of as the American phenomenon, who set it up? Who's the one who began it? Who's the one who set up the infrastructure? Who's the one who figured out the mechanism, who literally marched into Africa and started purchasing uh, African slaves to export around the world? That is all the Portuguese. It is estimated up to five to 10 million people were killed or decimated by the Portuguese invasions. And of course, Portugal therefore became the most powerful empire in its time, the 16th, the 17th century. The Portuguese controlled the spice trade. The Portuguese had the best ships. They had the best navies. What happened to them? How come we don't hear about them? Today we're going to discuss a little bit and inshallah we can assume but of course only Allah knows ilm al-ghayb that in fact it was the zulm that they did against so many people especially the Muslims that brought about their downfall. I want to mention in particular one incident that many people are, are not aware of and yet it demonstrates the cruelty of the Portuguese. Remember Portugal was ruled by Muslims for 250 years. Maybe another day I'll give a khatira about that. There's an entire province of Portugal called Algarve, 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 Algarve. And to this day, there are many castles in Portugal that Arabs built. To this day, many of the cities in Portugal are actually having an Arabic name. In fact, in Lisbon itself, there is an entire neighborhood that is known that the Muslims lived there until the expulsion. So Portugal is inherently linked with Islam. However, by the time the 1490s come, and they want to expel the Muslims, they have a hatred against Islam. They hate the Muslims with a passion. And so wherever they go, they wanted to make sure the Muslims especially are subjugated. And one of the stories which I want you to uh, think about and, and reflect and maybe do your own research on, when they entered India and they entered uh, the lands of Goa and other places, uh, the, the ruler of Calicut at the time, the ruler of Calicut, his title was the Zamorin, the Zamorin, that's the title of the ruler of Calicut, he was a Hindu. The Portuguese, Vasco de Gama, this is the same person that the West admires, he demanded that the Hindu rulers cut off the Muslim merchants. The Muslims and the Hindus, I told you this many times, there was not that level of animosity that, that modern India has. Muslims and Hindus, by and large, they got along fine. And the Muslims of India, the Muslims of Goa and of Calicut were the ones who would purchase from the owners, from the, from the rulers, and then export to Yemen, export to Africa. There was a very strong relationship. So when Vasco de Gama came, he said, I'm gonna allow you to remain ruler, but with one condition 
you have to get rid of the Muslims of your land, expel the Muslims of your land. And the Hindu ruler said, no, these are our allies. They have fought with us, they have lived with us. I'm not gonna expel the Muslims. And they mistreated the uh, Vasco de Gama's uh, uh, emissaries. They didn't like him, they kicked him out. They didn't realize the power of the Portuguese is all brand new. This is still the same Vasco de Gama. We're not talking about generations from the same person whom the West admires. Listen to what happened. The same guy, Vasco de Gama, wanted to now send a message. You're gonna mess with me? You're not gonna follow my rules to expel the Muslims? I'm gonna show you. So. On the way back from Hajj, there was a ship of Hujjaj coming. 450 Hujjaj. The name of the ship is called Miri. It's a famous incident that happened. You can look this up. In English, they say Mirin, but in, in Arabic, it's called Miri. 450 Hujjaj, including women and children. And these are complete innocent civilians have nothing to do with what is going on in the land. They're doing Hajj, they've come back. Vasco de Gama gives the command to surround the ship and cut off all supplies, even though the land is right there, they're on the way back. Cut off all supplies and start slowly massacring the people with bows and arrows and guns and the cannons. Of course, as you know, the Portuguese had the weapons that nobody else had. This is the, the rise of Europe is primarily because of military strength and because of the naval force. And the Hujaj took a while for them to figure out what's going on. Four or five days went by and one by one, the massacre continued and the Hujaj began negotiating. We'll give you all of our gold, we'll give you everything. And Vasco de Gama refused to accept any conditions. There is a chronicler from the ship of Vasco de Gama who chronicled in Portuguese exactly what happened that, that is available in English. You can read an eyewitness account. Even though they hated the Muslims, this chronicler, he himself said that this was a pitiful sight. What he saw, even his heart melted. Vasco de Gama did not even bat an eyelid. And he gave the command to burn the ship when the people were alive on it, after the fourth, fifth day. And the, the chronicler himself said, the women, the hujaj ladies picked up the baby saying, we have babies here, at least save the babies, at least that. No, nothing. You can imagine the la'na and the dua and everything that those ladies gave, those women, those mothers gave. 450 hujaj were massacred down to babies by none other than Vasco de Gama. Why? How dare you don't listen to my condition to expel the Muslims? And then of course the rampage began on the land in India itself, Calicut and Goa, as you're aware if you know your history. And then the Portuguese went to all over the world. They went to Macau, they went to China. They established trading ports in China. They began forcing Christianity on the people. That's why there's pockets of Catholics around the world. How did that happen? The Portuguese, by the way, even Muslims in Goa, they destroyed masjids. Of course, Hindu temples, lots of them. Even masjids at gunpoint, they forced Force people to convert, and uh, they they entered uh, what is now Malaysia. Uh, there's a, there was a sultan there, the Sultan of Malacca, the Sultan of Malacca. They invaded. It's now called Malaysia, one of those islands. They invaded that sultan, forced him as well to you know get rid of his empire, handed it over to them. They caused fitna and fasad everywhere they went. What happened? Subhanallah. One incident occurred that changed the course of history, and I say this because. Even though we don't bank on miracles, we don't, you know, we cannot expect miracles to happen, but still we should learn from history. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes zulm into account. And even if we cannot stop zulm physically, pause here. I'm not saying we shouldn't stop zulm physically. I'm not saying we become pacifist or whatnot. I have to be, always be careful. People jump at every ambiguous phrase and read in everything I say. I'm not saying we become apolitical, but I'm saying sometimes. People cannot fight oppression, but Allah will fight it directly. And Allah will intervene in ways we never could imagine and expect. What happened to the Portuguese empire such that nobody remembers the glory of Portugal? Nobody remembers the power. Their naval fleet was second to none. No England, no France, nothing could compete with the Portuguese. They built the fastest and the biggest ships. They had the mightiest empire. Their capital, Lisbon, it was the most prestigious capital in the 16th century. London could not compete with Lisbon. Lisbon was the darling of Europe. Why? Because obviously they have invaded all these Muslim and also, you know, not just Muslim, but you know, all, all lands as well. Uh, by the way, I gave a khatira last year about the Muslim revolt in, in Brazil. That was against the Portuguese, the way they treated the 
the Muslims, because remember, when we talk about slaves, remember 20, 30% were Muslim slaves. And not that any, j just because they're not, doesn't make it right. Of course, everything is wrong. But 20, 30% were Muslims. And I gave a khatir to write to you, you can look it up. The Muslim slave revolt of Brazil. It was as a, against whom? Against the Portuguese. Against this, these same Portuguese. What happened, subhanAllah, in this month, November of 1755? In this month of 1755, to be more precise, the 1st of November, and without a doubt, again, we cannot categorically state that Allah is doing this as a result of that. Only Allah knows. But still, we look at the outer reality. And every indication, and this is not just me speaking, even the Catholic priests at the time, even they believe that this is God's punishment against us. It is recorded on record. Catholic priests said this, why, how? First and foremost, well, what happened? The most devastating earthquake Europe has ever seen in its history. And it happened on the 1st of November, 1755, which is one of the most important Catholic festivals. And it happened at 10.30 in the morning when the entire city, because you know, it's a very Catholic country, it's a very religious country, was in the, 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 the churches. They were worshiping. And that day, it is called All Saints Day. It is the custom, and to this day it happens, that you light candles and you leave them burning for the saints. And on that day, some things happened that literally changed the course of history. As the people are in their churches, the city is empty, everybody's in the church. The zelzala, the earthquake occurred. Today, scientists estimate it measured nine on the Richter scale. If you know your Richter scale, this is beyond the charts. This is absolutely almost unprecedented. It measured nine on the Richter scale. This is something that is super rare in human history. And as the earthquake occurs and the buildings collapse, the people don't know what's happening, obviously. Tens of thousands die. They run into the streets trying to be saved. And they didn't realize, how are they gonna know this? The earthquake wasn't really an earthquake. It was a tsunami, actually. It was a tsunami. And so as they run into the streets, within 45 minutes, Waves come 10, 20, 30 feet high. So after the earthquake, they're already the buildings are gone. Now the waves come from the ocean and Lisbon is destroyed completely. 20 feet high out of the whole world. And if you look at it, Lisbon has never had an earthquake or a tsunami. It's never had. And then to top it off, and this is all of course Allah's qadr. It was the 1st of November. All the houses have candles everywhere. So as soon as that finishes, the whole earth is shaking, everything happens, the candles are falling. Of course, it's 1755, all houses are built with wood. And so Lisbon burns nonstop for three weeks, burns to the ground. 80% of Lisbon is completely destroyed. You can look this up on any encyclopedia, the great earthquake or the great tsunami of Lisbon, 1755. In one day, in one day, Earthquake, tsunami, and fire destroys the entire city. Literally, the entire city is gone. It is, <clears throat> it is estimated 30% or 40% of the city died. Tens of thousands, I don't know the exact number, tens of thousands of people died. The entire city collapsed. The king went mad. For the rest of his life, the king could not sleep in a house. He would sleep in the tent in the middle of the, the street. He couldn't sleep in the house. The people started wondering what is going on. The priests began saying, this is God's punishment against us because of what we're doing. Even the priests began saying, this is God's punishment. The people were shocked. How could on the holiest of holy days, during this church time, literally on the first of November, while we're in church, all of this happens. This is a sign from God that we are doing something wrong. And of course, this 1755 tragedy, it was the beginning of the end of the Portuguese empire. That said, they could not recover one incident, one incident. It, it, it sent them into a type of shell shock that literally they could not recover after this. And after this, England and other countries began the rise and Portugal began the descent because of one simple tragedy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had willed. And of course, we cannot, you know, definitively state that this incident led to that. Only Allah knows, but without a doubt, we do state definitively. Allah says in the Quran, 
that فَكُلًّا أَخَذْنَا بِذَنْبِهِ Every single person, we took him according to his sins. We dealt with him according to his sins. فَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ أَرْسَلْنَا عَلَيْهِ حَاصِبًا وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ خَسَفْنَا بِهِ الْأَرْضَ وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ أَخَذَتُ الصَّيْحَةُ وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ خَسَفْنَا بِهِ الْأَرْضَ وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ أَغْرَقْنَا Literally Allah is saying, some people we sent an earthquake. Some people we caused the earth to swallow them. Some people we sent the tidal waves. Some people we sent, you know, a loud noise against them. Of course, Allah is talking about people in the past, but we take an ibrah from this verse. And that is, فَكُلًّا أَخَذْنَا بِذَنْبِهِ We believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never allows injustice to flourish. And even if we cannot stop it, we should try to stop it. Even if we cannot stop it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will himself intervene. So when we see what is going on, when we see the reality of dhulm, do not lose hope in Allah. True, we don't plan miracles. We leave it to Allah. But we have yaqeen that no empire that unjustly kills, that, that decimates, that murders and massacres millions of people around the globe. We're making dua against this nation and country. And subhanAllah, within one day, the entire empire collapsed. And this is not ancient history. This is, we have eyewitness accounts. We have so many aspects that happened. By the way, footnote here, that this incident triggered many issues that are not relevant to us of them. They say, scientists or researchers say, well, scientists say this was the beginning of scientism. This was the beginning of people studying seismology, studying, uh, you know, earthquakes and whatnot. The whole discipline began from, uh, from, uh, from, from Lisbon. Also, by the way, um, architecture, uh, how to build structures that are going to be resistant. This began over there as well. Also, what is interesting for us, the rise of atheism and the rejection of Christianity. Because the iman of these folks is so weak, when one tragedy happens, the response was, this country, this nation started losing Christianity. How could God send this down on the day of the church? And it literally caused a shift. And as you now know, those lands are very uh, uh, secular. And they say this was the main catalyst that's, that started the rise of secularism and agnosticism. But for us as Muslims, wanted to teach you world history. And of that world history is that even though we don't plan for it, we put our trust in Allah. And we know for certain that Allah ala kulli shayin qadir. Uh, one of the chroniclers he wrote down, he, he wrote down, it is as if God sent every force of nature against us on that day. It is as if we had no friends and allies. The wind, the fire, the air, the ocean, everything turned against us. This is what the eyewitness said. And of course, this is Allah Azza wa Jal demonstrating His quwa. When Allah sends His armies against the Dhalim nation, there is no one that can possibly stand up. So we put our trust in Allah, we make dua to Allah, we ask Allah that we stop the dhulm that we see, but we also trust in case we cannot stop it, Allah Azza wa Jal will never allow dhulm to flourish. May Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala bless our brothers and sisters who are being persecuted and allow us to see victory either at our hands or directly from Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala. And inshallah with that, I will see you in two weeks. I'm traveling I'll come back inshallah in two weeks inshallah ta'ala wazakumullah khair assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh wa ya khajali idha ma qala li rabbi amastahiyaytah ta'asini wa la takhsha min al-atabi wa tukhfi al-dhamb an khalqi وتأبى في الهوى قربي فتب مما جنيت عسى تعود 